the environment is not a world it is an individual thing this was voiced by shri arbindo ghosh just like his contemporaries swami vivekananda and shri rabindranath tagore more than a century ago these were the people who were considered environment pioneers in india then in fact rabindranath tagore consistently sought harmony between preservation and progress which is reflected in most of his work environment issues like river erosion and deforestation are hot subjects today but rabindranath tagore was conscious of these environmental disasters way back then he was extremely annoyed at the way man refused to respect nature he sought to communicate his thoughts through his works which inspired and motivated people to respect nature and gave mother nature a reason to smile the beauty of his conception was that he sought to communicate all these values through a cultural framework and not through sloganeering or pamphlets this is exactly what urban planner an ecologist shri jay singh contemplates 71 years after the indian constitution has come into force but as we all have seen there is an order in this chaos that is called india jai hind India is perhaps one country where the sense of freedom the independence day is not linked to the republic immediately this is the greatness they took freedom they took independence then they constituted a body to understand what was life and then brought the republic which means they knew the responsibility and changed it which is very important that's why the word freedom has another word called liberty liberty freedom and then choice it is not freedom liberty and choice that is one of the most fascinating constitutions in the world we i don't know why they made so many changes i think was necessary anyway that is up to the way of looking at things but the fact is moment you say freedom freedom has tremendous discipline tremendous discipline that you fundamentally agree to the fundamental rights of human beings that is very important the freedom of choice the elements the senses the human sentiments the human emotions they all have tremendous integration and they differ from person to person to person many of these are yet the overall picture from liberty freedom that's why the word choice comes you have the freedom to choose human beings must enjoy the freedom to choose they must not be constituted in one point and say you will only do this no that person must have the right of expression he then wants assistance yes he must know how to get that assistance he wants to learn yes he must know how to get that learning process you can't just shun him out this is where i agree that we are all born equal but how we accomplish and do depends on the individuality but that opportunity for achieving what you want should be available to every citizen that's born in this country which means our education must go back to the system i don't like to use the gandhian system or the indian village system because when i went to valley school and a few other places to rishi valley and i think i found the education system can be totally exams are not important at all coming first and second is not important at all i really can't find why one person is first and one person is second i have never understood this at all each person each individual is capable of something which the other person may not even understand some things i don't even understand i just smile and said why do you call me then i find when i communicate something happens in this communication this is where i want the communication to happen and yet the identity 
of your ethos is preserved and be with you. But that does not mean you go back into the shelter of the past. You must accept and agree with the art and technology fusing together and then moving forward. Sometimes you will start looking at cities just because a factory has to make cars, doesn't have to make cars. There is a factory, it can make something else for the future. Again, I'm a little worried when people say, I was with the thing, you should make all roads cycle friendly or pedestrian friendly. They were talking. You must understand the people there before you make that. Otherwise, it looks very interesting. You can't do bicycles in Bangalore. It's highs, mountains, up and down it goes. You can do it in Chennai up to a point. But when the city is about 40, 50 kilometers wide, how can you do it? How do you go about it? Will electric vehicles solve it? It looks like it will solve it. But who will charge the battery? Where will you get the power from? It's a challenge of technology that must be done, but must be done with a very open mind, with a very understanding of the depths of our culture, of the depths of our ethos. And yet, look at the thing. We are the only people who can absorb any culture into with us without any, what I would call, fear of freedom. And then go ahead and go beyond it. Whereas I really touched one significant which I'm always afraid of. Religion is what kills. Philosophy opens up. Religion pushes you into dogma. It should go. Religion can be places of worship for watching cultures and historic spaces. Fine, I'm with it. But beyond that, no, it must go. Statistics of people should go. Their ability to evolve, their ability to do, the ability to communicate, the ability to achieve must be open to one and all. Reservations must totally go. It's up how to give this opportunity, that's, I don't know. But I'm sure there are able people who can really achieve it, who can give us the guidelines to achieve this, what I would call sense of equality. Equality of running, equality of achieving. But then the races of his own, on his own track, of his own direction. This is where I like some colleges which have opened out in our, especially in architectural field. I very clearly have told the council that I'm not even interested in giving any degree to these students. They can come to me, they intern with me, then they can do any area. You then find out if you want to register them or not to practice architecture or practice environmental science or whatever you want. And even in that, they can go in any direction they want. I believe colleges and things should only be places of learning, not certificates of degree. If that can be done, then you'll find spaces of learning expand beyond oneself, expand beyond the individual to another phenomena, which will be a great future, which will open this country to lead many other spaces of other countries into new phenomena. A girl who was right now reading a thesis of many pages and many chapters and many things. Now, the thesis is fine, the philosophy is fine, but are you reading this only to get your doctorate? Or are you doing to, sharing this to understand what the future is? To understand what your lifestyle is? Understand what the past was? How to interpret the past to the present to the future? Can we interpret it? I believe this subcontinent has the ability to do it has the tremendous sources available. As I come back to the same journey. Take one walk down this, this little Kanakpura road or even into this village and walk. People may look very identical, specific, but you find every kilometer there is some change. There is something that happens, something. This is now being killed by fast traffic and fast movement. Those who, I was always saying, those who want to go very fast from place to place, go underground or fly and go. Don't bother with the roads. I was, for very much of the communication system, I still come back to the word communication because I believe human beings must communicate. Silence is fine. Silence is also a way of communicating. When you sit quiet and watch, you understand phenomenal things that drop into you. That must come out as an expression. When sannyasis go, they just don't go. They go there to understand something which they couldn't understand in the city life or the urban life or the house life. There is something more 
than just the family. The family is a larger integration of humans. That aspect must play a big role in the future of our education, our environment, which I look as the spaces of living, of work, of entertainment, of joy and pleasure. Yes, I believe in the yin and yang and of the Indian system of saying it's a cycle. But the cycle can be done in such a way that unless you express or understand pain, you don't understand joy, you understand pleasure. You must understand the pain. Because then you realize what it is. Then you don't have to push it. You can now overgo it and then grow into pleasure of a journey. That journey is very important. Here I'm going to stress another point. Again and again, the goal of the journey is not important. The journey is important because every point of the journey has pleasure and you may suddenly take off and go off somewhere else. How you come, how you go, this is what matters. The moment you say, I'm going to achieve that, you are dead. Because your whole brain, everything is only working on bugs and this, only trying to achieve that. That should go. The journey must be enjoyed. Then you will find something phenomenal in human habitation happens. This is where the environmentalists, the acoustics, the ecologists can very softly bring in, I, I don't like to use the word a change without change or something like that, an evolution process that can make this civilization of human beings, the real world of culture and civilization, very epitome, very phenomenal. I have great confidence in our people that somehow in the next five, ten years, there is a lot of things because we are a tremendous pressure of various things. But people, are youngsters, are going to open it out in a very big way. We have all lived our lives. We have all lived our lives. But we can only tell us from experience. But that doesn't mean that they should follow our experience totally. They should learn from us and find their own direction. I'll use a small example of just how India got sucked into sitting in the past. Whenever somebody calls me, will you design me a temple or will you design me a thing? Their mind goes back to what was done 2,000 years back, 5,000 years back. They don't understand why that was done that way then. But the spirit of it is what they should understand. They don't under, the most of the pujaris in India too, don't understand the spirit of it. They understand the physical part of it. Sir, seven rounds or five rounds or three rounds in your temple or nine rounds. I said, is not the, why does the nine round, seven round, five round, three round, one round come? Why is that concentration finally to minimize the large heavy market into a singular interacting place? That is a phenomenon. That if I can achieve by doing a reverse pyramid or an underground temple or light from the nature, taking nature in its maximum thing. Look at the way nature changes every month, every day. The sun moves, the moon moves, the star moves. Yet, they don't move haphazardly. Every one of them has a sense of order in that chaos. We are an insignificant small part of it. And we, human beings, with the mind, unlike animals who are very clear about what they do, their interactions and their movements are very, very clear, habituated. Trees and plants are very habituated. They belong. The human mind is the only mind that can take the human body as an integral parcel, as an integral being interact with others. But the humans alone can't live alone. It's a very strange thing. Communication never happened. Then something happens. That happening, I believe, the subcontinent is the right place for it to work. Can we do it? I believe we can. I believe the future can. Yes, it can reach a journey of phenomenal achievements. Not maybe tomorrow, not maybe in the next one year, but the direction of growth, various factors can happen in it. Just the joy of working, the joy of happiness, the joy of finding and finding. Somebody asked me if there is in the journey, if one step is painful and the other fall is just joyful, what would you choose? I initially thought this way, then I looked at it. I said, but this painful journey is much more adventurous, much more fascinating. Yes, but there is a little danger, but there's a little chaos, there's a little thing. But that journey is a real journey because pain 
is not really pain, but real joy. Whereas here there is nothing, there's a bridge to cross, somebody put the bridge, you just cross, ah, I reached. What do you do after reaching there? Whereas here I find sun, so I find a jump. Here I would, in a way, say I had totality of the human civilization as a built spaces, because human beings need built spaces. For just an example, we were working on one theory. A few of us sitting somewhere far away. They took about half a dozen of us. I like the organization. Said so if all of us were to live together in human habitation, what would the designs that should happen? We worked for about two, three days on this. I found a very fascinating, if we put everybody, said so today, if I take today's order, I said, okay, we'll look at today's order. A family of two has two children, maybe their parents staying, or children staying, a grandparent staying, fine, three, five, put it together. Some will be two bedrooms, some will be three bedrooms, children play spaces, school. If we released every land and pushed them all together, what would it be? We were amazed, we were amazed totally to discover, giving them all the comfort like this, sitting there and think, including play spaces, work spaces, joy spaces, entertainment spaces, study spaces, interactive spaces, that we could build two floors below, three floors above, no floor for the animals and all in the middle, within just 50 kilometers by 50 kilometers. You can put the whole human civilization as it exists today in the next 10 years. We all looked, he said, wait, I said, here, we have put the drawings, we got the plan, opens, everybody gets fresh light, everybody gets sunlight, everybody gets air. Whereas here, what happened? We are spread all over, half the apartments you go, there is no one, no side air, no side light here, it is just sold. We just give it. Why? It's because we have not used the mind. It doesn't mean you have to live in 50 kilometers or 50 kilometers. Well, just as an example, we can. Now, I said, stepping on the last point as I, he was talking, he was then admiring for my environment, so he was thinking process in a very deep way. Human beings in the next 10 years are going to explore. The sea is very difficult to explore. I thought the sea would be the first. We did some project. We found after three kilometers down, it's very difficult. It's a big challenge, although three-fourths of the earth is the sea. Water is hardly anything, but then we, that so much of water and we don't know how to drink water. The space, the wandering space, huge infinity. The moon, the Mars and things. Who knows, there may be other civilizations who will interact with this. Who knows, there will be other spaces of teaching us various other factors that will happen. We should be open to that, not close ourselves as one people. That again becomes bad. Not allowing others to interact is not right. We must allow the openness in the mind, openness in action, openness in movement. No, I, I agree with him, son. There should be no passports and visas. There should be only question. You can't hit the other fellow. You do what you want as long as you can do it. That's the future of life. I anticipate in urban spaces of, I usually call even these villages urban spaces because technology goes to them. I will just close on this point to say, I find when I do a home or a school in a village, it's much more to me adventurous than doing in the city. Because that man first time looks at you and says, so what are you doing? In fact, somebody called me just before, said, can you come home to our village and start one more run? We love the way we work. But the villager has finally understood the importance of technology, the importance of art, which they had neglected because they thought whatever was in the city was great. Finally, he realized, no, it is not so. That he can evolve a system of light far more fascinating. My 100% goal is the future of this subcontinent and our lives are in the villages of the future. You call them whatever you want. We should move into these spaces. <laughs>